The other choice is international adoption. Um, we've been adopting internationally in this country for decades. International adoptions peaked in 2004 and then started declining, and um, they dropped drastically in last year. In the last two or three years, they've dropped drastically, and I'm going to discuss why as we proceed. The United States has um, been adopting more children internationally than all other countries combined. Approximately 40,000 inter-country adoptions take place a year. And what you need to know about international adoptions is that they generally follow war, political unrest, and natural disasters. We saw this with the Vietnam baby lift, if any of you remember that, and much more recently, following the earthquake in Haiti, missionaries rushed in and grabbed up children, and they were in such a, a mad rush to do this that they often took children who weren't orphaned. 90% of children living in orphanages worldwide are not orphans. They're putting new labels on these children. They're calling them, in some cases, half orphans. The, uh, the fact of the matter is that in many, many parts of the world, people use orphanages for temporary care. Because they're placing their child in an orphanage does not mean that they want this child to be available for adoption and certainly not adopted out of the country. They visit these children. They use the orphanages in many, many cases for medical help for their children that they cannot afford and even for education for their children that they cannot afford. So here's where... Um, most of the adopted children are coming from today. And here's another um, quote from UNICEF about the lack of regulation and oversight, particularly in the countries where these children are coming from. Coupled with the potential for financial gain has spurred the growth of an industry around adoption where profit rather than the best interests of the children takes center stage. Abuses include the sale and abduction of children, coercion of parents, and bribery. It's also interesting to note that um, in addition to the huge numbers of children that come into this country via international adoption, there are a smaller number of children who leave this country for international adoption, which really, when you think about it, has to make you ponder the best interest of the child. Because with all the people in this country seeking to adopt, why would we need to send any children out of this country for adoption if it weren't for the fact that the brokers really, in many, many cases, are not putting the best interest of the children first. Here's another sad quote. <laughs> Very recent, I just had to add this. this. You can see the date on the bottom of this quote. This was very recent. Um, an article in um, the Houston Journal of International Law. Illegal adoption practices are a perversive problem, ranging from fraudulent practices designed to trick parents and guardians into giving up their children for adoption, forging documents, and in some cases outright kidnapping of children for the sole purpose of adopting them out. Now, the trickery that's used um, is... First of all, a lot of the people around the world do not read and write. They're asked to sign papers. They don't know what they're signing. They are very, very often told that they're signing papers for their children to come to America and be educated, and they believe the children will come back. Um, some of them are told they're signing consent for medical care for their children. So there's a lot of ways these parents are duped out of their children. And the reason is that there's a lot of money in adoption. The demand is high, and whenever you have demand, prices go up. 
So I said that I would talk about why there was a drop in the number of international adoptions. And the reason is because of all of the, coer all of the uh, corruption, several countries have closed their international adoption programs. One was Vietnam. Vietnam stopped for evidence of significant irregularities, fraud concerns, and the lack of sufficient legal safeguards. And Vietnam was, it was a fairly big source of babies for this country. The other major source of, of babies for this country for many, many years was Guatemala. There were approximately 4,000 adoptions a year from Guatemala between 2006 and 2008. But as many of you know, Guatemala is an extremely corrupt country with a lot of violence against women, a lot of drug dealers, and uh, people who deal in drugs uh, can easily go from that to dealing in babies. They'll deal anything that has a price tag on it. I visited Guatemala in 2009. I was there on a human rights delegation. I met with Norma Cruz, who works with um, a project to, to, uh, for women that are experiencing violence in Guatemala. The violence against women is rampant because the police department there is so corrupt. We were told while we were visiting that if we had any problems to call the fire department, not the police department, because the police are so corrupt. Women were being killed at liberty and, and um, with impunity. Body parts were, were strewn all over the country. And one of the crimes against women that Norma Cruz and other civil rights workers were working on was the kidnapping of their children. Now these three women here I met with when I was there, these are three women who had their children kidnapped from them. Um, the kidnappings take place uh, under various means. Some of the women are just duped and, and, and told the, the lies that I, as I expressed before. Some of them are drugged and the lady on the left of this photo with the child on her lap, um, her baby was stolen from her at gunpoint. The two ladies on the right, their children were kidnapped and never seen again. This is the lady who is on the, on the left in this picture, Anna Escobar. She was a very, very unique case. I met with Anna. This is a picture that I took of her and her daughter. Um, Anna was very, very fortunate that she was able to identify her daughter by a deformed finger, and she was able to find her before she left the country for adoption. She was scheduled to, to come to America for adoption. Anna was able to find her and get her daughter back, but that's a one in a million. The rest of them don't. In fact, this, little, this mother, Loida Rodriguez, also um, identified her daughter as being a kidnapped victim. Now you have to understand, when women in Guatemala report that their children are kidnapped, victim blaming on women, women are so <sighs> oppressed in Guatemala and so blamed everything is their own fault if they're raped or whatever violence is, is put upon them. And when they report kidnappings, the police will often accuse them of selling their babies. And there was a big, for many, many years, adopters in this country believed that the women in Guatemala were so poor they were selling their babies. And so they thought, well, you know, if that's the case, then, then it's really a good thing that we adopt from there. Um, but then all of these kidnappings came to be exposed. So um, this woman's daughter was um, sent to the United States, um, but Guatemala was able to verify, which is also unusual, they did verify that it was a kidnapping. However, the child is still living with her adoptive parents here in the States. Guatemala rescinded the adoption because it was a kidnapping, but Here's where, where a lot of the problems come in with these international adoptions. There's corruption in that country, but once the child gets here, 
there is a legal adoption that takes place. And the State Department oversees all of these and they did nothing. They never demanded a DNA test to even prove or deny that the child was a kidnap victim. Great book if you want to read more about Guatemalan adoption. And this book I can recommend even if you have no interest in the subject of adoption whatsoever. It's just a really well-written, almost like a mystery novel. It is a mystery novel, except it's, it's a mystery story, except that it's a true, factual story. And it also shows how those who are adopting are so desperate for a baby that they're willing to turn a blind eye on really obvious red lights. 